Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Hale. I'm the CEO of Victory. I'm a veteran of our United States Navy, and I'd like to welcome you to the August 25th GI Jobs Virtual Career Expo. We have a phenomenal keynote speaker with us here today. We've had phenomenal keynote speakers since March when we started these, and today um, is no different. We are uh, really, really blessed today to have John Devine with us. John is a Navy veteran and leads global operations at Faith Facebook, which he joined in 2018. Quick bio on John. Um, he graduated from uh, the US Naval Academy in 1991 with distinction, with a degree in bachelor, uh, bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. John and I were actually in the same major and had, and in the same class. So we had a lot of classes together. And I got to tell you, there were maybe, I don't know, 60 or 70 of us. And this guy always broke the curve. There were like three or four guys who always, yeah, he's shaking his head, but he knows exactly what he's talking about. John was the kind of guy like um, that would do his, I'm gonna embarrass him here, but he would do his homework in class while the rest of us struggled, you know, pulling all nighters to try to get homework done. But um, you always knew that John was gonna go places. He not only had the brains, but he had the personality and the leadership qualities um, to really, really go big places. So it's no surprise seeing where he is today. Um, after the Naval Academy, he went to nuclear power school, didn't get enough school. Um, so he went and got a nuclear engineering degree from UC Berkeley and an MBA from Washington as well. While he was on active duty, he served a total of eight years on active duty and served on uh, the lead boat in the Ohio class, the USS Ohio, which is the uh, ballistic missile submarine. Um, he left active duty in 99. He joined McKinsey, probably the best uh, leading, well, the world's leading management consulting firm where he spent 14 years in rising roles. In 2013, John, uh, John joined Yahoo, where he led global operations for five years, spent a year at Oath as the chief revenue officer before joining Facebook three years ago, I think this month. Um, so happy anniversary there. But without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you a great American, a Navy veteran, John Devine. Chris, thanks. Thanks a ton for that intro. Super nice. So, and it's really fun for me to talk to Chris because just so many good memories come up uh, from our time together. And yeah, although Chris's version of the past is uh, somewhat distorted, uh, I, I'll just tell you, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a guy. I'm a person who's still figuring life out. And what I remember being at the Naval Academy is not being sure who I was, uh, what I was going to be. It wasn't clear to me uh, what I would go do. And still some days I, I'm not sure, uh, you know, what life holds in store. Uh, but to me, that's part of the magic of, 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 of life and just embracing the, the miracle and the wonder of the opportunities that will come at you. And if you're a veteran getting out of the military, let me just promise you, look up in the sky. There are a sky full of stars and each one of those stars is an opportunity and something that you'll have, uh, you know, you'll have a chance to go do. And, and I haven't, uh, I'm not one of those people who's had a five-year, 10-year plan. Um, you know, I just know when one of those stars is shooting across the sky, like that's, hey, that's something that I would, you know, I should think about and do. And, and that's kind of the, always the way I've approached, um, you know, a career. I've had a few principles, which is uh, do something of service, which is why I love the military, work with great people. Uh, which is why I love the military and go somewhere where you have a chance to grow and develop. And as long as I was doing those three things, I, my view is, you know, uh, a career would take care of itself. That said, you know, it's good to um, it's good to learn from others. And I'm really happy to share my experience having been in the military and then made made the transition. Uh, Chris covered my I guess my, my professional bio pretty, pretty good. Um, personally, I've uh, married just over 25 years. Uh, I uh, got married while, while I was on the Ohio and uh, four kids and two of whom are uh, in or through college and then two of whom are in high school. So, um, you know, I consider myself also a father and and, and, a, and a husband and those are really important roles and a uh, big part of who I am in my life. So uh, why don't I just tell you my, uh, you know, story, I guess, as I was leaving the military chapter one of my life until the day I turned 30 like Chris said, after eight years of active duty, here I was in the military, and I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was living in Seattle at the time, our submarine was in Seattle. Um, I felt like I'd kind of missed the Microsoft wave. Um, this, this 
you know, at the time the internet explosion was happening, um, I remember talking to Chris and some buddies at that time, like there was this whole dynamic world. And I, I was very proud of my service, but I just, I, I knew my, you know, I knew that there were things out there that I, I wanted to do um, beyond the military. And so I made that decision to leave, but I was not sure what it was I was going to do. Uh, felt like I missed the Microsoft wave. I wasn't a computer scientist. You know, yes, I studied nuclear engineering, helps on a submarine, but um you know, I, I, I wasn't sure I want to build airplanes and Boeing. Uh, my wife was from Seattle. I think I'd like to be in Seattle. I didn't, you know, like coffee, but I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to be a retailer at Starbucks. And so I ended up um, through some other other military folks stumbling into McKinsey, which admittedly was a great firm and a great experience. Uh, and I was fortunate to have, you know, had that door and that path open. Uh, that was one of those shooting stars where I said, wow, I, I don't ever, I never thought I wanted to be a consultant. Like that's never been in my list of, I didn't even know what McKinsey was, but, um, but what I did know is boy, the people I met there were incredible. And the culture was very service oriented and service, uh, driven. It's a, the whole culture of the place is very non-commercial and I felt, and I clearly could grow there. So I, I felt immediately like, okay, this, this would be a good thing for me to do. So I jumped in and immediately started getting involved in recruiting um, uh, at that firm, recruiting, especially re recruiting other military folks like me. And we would recruit um, military folks every year into associate or analyst positions. It's pretty competitive and pretty hard. Um, but uh, I guess one of the things I highlight here before I get into my tech chapter is, uh, you know, it was it was. Uh, you know, it was it was a big shift, I would say. I, I, I took a whole bunch of things that helped me immediately from the from the military. Uh, the idea of um, standing up in front of a, 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 a team, a squad, a division on a submarine or standing on the con bridge, you know, having the con or on the bridge of a submarine and being able to uh, be calm under pressure, being able to give clear orders, be able to communicate clearly. Um, be able to think through dynamic problems and ambiguous situations. Uh, I just found like, wow, I, I didn't realize how much I had developed those muscles until and those skills until I saw the people around me, the other associates. I was 30 at the time. Most of the other associates were 26, 27, 28. But I felt like I was uh, laps around the block ahead just in terms of that real practical experience. I mean, most of the folks coming in super, super smart, you know, Harvard Business School, whatever, but, you know, most of them had done really um, kind of, I don't want to trivialize, but, but, you know, what their jobs were not like, you know, the, the types of things that the military afforded us in terms of experience and opportunity. And so a lot of them, I just, you know, I don't think really had that, had that seasoning. And, uh, and so that was a huge help. But as I also talked to other military, you know, folks and coach them and interview them through the process, um, you know, there was also sometimes some baggage folks would bring from the military. Uh, you know, the notion of wearing your rank on your collar or your sleeve, having a uh, hierarchical structure, uh, a clear chain of command. None of that was true at McKinsey. McKinsey is a very non-hierarchical place. Everything was based on relationships and intellectual thought leadership. And uh, you really had to learn to lead and influence not using uh, positional, any kind of positional authority. Uh, that was a big factor. The other factor that I would emphasize and reinforce is um, what, what so we articulated at McKinsey as a employee mentality versus an ownership mentality. And you were really filtering this in our interview process. Uh, what you were looking for was somebody who had a, uh, an ownership mentality, uh, not somebody who was gonna show up and sort of wait for instructions. And, and, and in the military, sometimes we have so many procedures and so many, you know, so much uh, emphasis put on following orders that we can become a little bit employee mentality oriented. And that's not what succeeds at McKinsey. And I would say generally McKinsey is a good extrapolation for the business world at large. There is an ilk of people who walk into a room and this, you don't have to be 25 or 30 or 35 years old. You, some of the people are like this in high school. I mean, they walk into a room and they, or a classroom, and they like, you know, okay, whatever the teacher tells me, but here's how I think about this subject. This is what I think this, how this school should be run. This is how I think this, uh, you know, should happen, uh, you know, in this organization. And you just think like an owner. You think like somebody who is, 
has an obligation to own the outcomes, the fundamental outcomes, and is a critical thinker about every dimension. And that manifests itself, uh, and Associate McKinsey, that manifested itself as somebody who thinks um, not just in an associate role, but as if you were the engagement manager, or even more important, as if you were the client or the COO or the CEO of whatever company you're serving. Here's how I think, like, this is wrong. And, and you know, this can be way better. And, uh, and uh, I have a lucid and clear idea about how this can improve. And people that have that ownership mentality, it's like a, you know, binary dip switch. If you can either, either have it or turn it on. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a really important feature to have. And I think it's something that I would be very conscious of. And, and it's something I talk about anytime I talk to folks coming out of the military. Great that, you know, you bring all these assets of courage, discipline, um, you know, experience. On the flip side, you're going into a world that's, you know, a bit more ambiguous. And with diplomacy, you need to figure out how to be a critical thinker and also have an ownership mentality, um, you know, without running people over. And, you know, there's a, there's a negative side to that, too. Uh, it doesn't, you know, you, you have to have a humility along with that, not an arrogance. I think humility is also another term that uh, another feature or value or, or character attribute that I think is really important at every level. And uh, as a leader, the more uh, humility I have about my own decisions, our direction, our strategy, I think the better people follow, the more they relate to you as a leader and the better they follow. So um, also you know, some people come out of the military thinking, well, I'm a badass and, you know, I've done this and that. And uh, humility is always necessary, no matter what, you know, your experience that is bringing that into your into your role. So ownership mentality, humility, um, along with, uh, you know, I would say problem solving were the things that McKinsey, which was my second chapter of my life, um, were really important takeaways and things that uh, were reflections on uh, make, post military transition. Um, so I was at McKinsey till I was 40, and then I and then I dropped into Silicon Valley in tech. So I'll spend a few minutes just talking about that. I, I do the same now in tech. I talk to a lot of military. Uh, I work with military recruiting teams. Uh, I help. I lead our veterans group at Facebook, which is I mean that alone is 2,500 employees who are ex-military or allies of vets. Um, and so uh, you know it's a really important cause in my life, and I love talking about it. Uh, so tech industry, by the way, I don't know what, you know, there's lots of different places you can go and, and, and employ your talents. I think tech is uh, fantastic. Um, it's the most, to me, dynamic, exciting industry. And, and you know, to be, I work closely with uh, a guy named Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg and not to name drop, but this is a, uh, you know, it's a world-class product driven uh, entrepreneurial company and I'm tremendously impressed and it's great to have role models like that by the way who are not military but you know to me have have given me new role models in terms of what leadership looks like um, the things I would say about tech it is highly dynamic so I think the military experience can be an asset maybe and sometimes a liability uh, you know having a procedure uh, is helpful although sometimes in three months we're doing work entirely differently I, I lead an organization of almost 4,000 people at Facebook, and by extension, we then employ 40, well, tens of thousands of people around the globe through Accenture and different different vendors. Uh, but the work we're doing is incredibly dynamic; it's changing all the time. So um, that's what makes it fun, though. It's a uh, it's a hugely dynamic environment. The um, it's very much a product driven uh, culture, and by that I mean computer scientists. You know, Mark obviously is uh, writes code. Uh, you know, I think he still writes code. <laughs> Um, uh, and the leaders of the company strategically are folks who have a computer science background. And the same as I was at Yahoo with Marissa Meyer, who had come from Google. Her whole the whole leadership team was was computer science and code writing. I I am not a computer scientist, and so you know my success in Silicon Valley, my success in tech has relied on me. And you know the military experience is is very much appreciated. It's not totally understood, but it's very much appreciated. But my impact in tech and in Silicon Valley has been largely a function of bringing an operations experience, which, which then I can, um, which, you know, um, I, I, I can support the company through all the kind of operational functions we do. And I accept that it's, it's, uh, you know, it's sort of a central utility within Facebook. I support all the different product teams 
anywhere they need, you know, human operations done at scale globally. Um, and we hire in my operations team, we hire all, a, you know, a whole bunch of folks with military background. We love all of those assets, those, you know, operational discipline and frankly, you know, service commitment. Um, I mean, this morning I was working very closely on our situation in, you know, in Afghanistan. And Facebook as a platform has tremendous importance in every time there's a world event like this, um, you know, how that platform can be used for good in terms of sharing information within the country or for, um, for you know, for malfeasance. Uh, you know, how can Facebook be used by the Taliban to find folks who, you know, had worked with or friends with folks in the U.S. government. I mean, that's something we have to think through all the time. We have to think through what's posted on Facebook um, and uh, what crosses our, our lines of community standards around violence, incitement, hate speech, you know, all of these things. And that's tremendously dynamic. That's the kind of stuff we do in, in my global operations team. And so having people who you know, have local context and experience is really important. Folks who understand operations and the leadership of large teams at scale, uh, executing tasks 24/7, 365. You know, all of those things. Having having a having a, you know that kind of military background uh, is 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 terrific. I don't think you need to go get a computer science degree. Is my point in order to to be in the world of tech. Um, and have impact at a, at a place like Facebook. It is a big company with a broad spectrum of roles where the military background can be very, um, you know, very important. We recruit actively for military. Uh, we have just explicit targets around hiring military, and we're really proud of our connection and support of the military. And, uh, you know, so, you know, if tech is something that's interest, I would tell you it's very much a door that, that can be open. Um, and so with that, that's some of my, you know, that's some of my journey. I wasn't looking at the clock, but I know Chris uh, had suggested we do some Q and A. Um, I look forward to, you know, some of the some of the questions that he had tipped me off on. But hopefully that gives you an overview of my journey and my sense of, you know, making this transition from the military into the world beyond and especially into tech. John, really good stuff, man. And uh, it's just, yeah, like I said, it's. Facebook has such uh, such global influence, influence, and I think everybody in our audience has a Facebook or Instagram account, and um, it's just it's awesome and very inspiring to see someone who comes one of us, right? One of uh, someone who comes from that military and that veteran community um, at the at the helm uh, at the uh, in the C suite here with with uh, some of the leading you know one of the leading organizations in the world. So thank you. Um, Couple, couple questions and comments. So, really intrigued um, your your thoughts around sort of this ownership mentality, not waiting for orders. You know, there's not a there's not a NATOPS manual. I was in aviation. There's no NATOPS manual um, for how to do your job in the private sector in in most places. Um, so, yeah, just a little more on that. How do you get beyond? You know, you run a submarine, right? You screw up. The consequences are pretty pretty vast. Um, so how do you get beyond, you know, sort of this uh, not waiting for orders, so to speak, mentality that exists in a lot of in a lot of places in the military into this more this open field um, in the private sector? Yeah, uh, great, great question, because like I said, to me, that's, you know, a really important kind of binary concept to be mindful about. I'll tell a story like when I first got to McKinsey, I remember I first got there it was like the first first week I was there and you know you get there and then they like there's a staffing coordinator and then they staff you to a project and you know they had staffed me this project with the bank and I was like okay great you know and and then I say like, okay well you need to be in you know wherever it was Charlotte North Carolina you know on Tuesday morning at nine I was like okay like you know how do I get there and like you know just go to travel you just book a ticket I'm like like, I don't need a chit with 17 people to get permission to like get this flight. Like, no, just, you know, go, go get, you know, go figure it out, go get there. And it was, you know, and it was, uh, it was, it was fun. It was liberating, but I, I was, I was very conscious of myself feeling constrained or habituated by, you know, the process of process and procedures, reactor startup or NATOPS manual, whatever the case may be, you know, with any kind of behavior change, I think the first thing is just mindfulness, you know, just being aware of that as a, as an ingrained behavior pattern. Um, 
and uh, uh, you know, so I think that's 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 the first step. I think um, you know, and then come through mindfulness, just comes comes practice. I, you know, it doesn't always have to manifest itself in you know actions. Like you don't need to manifest that by then standing up in front of a room and declaring like I have a vision and here's my Jerry Maguire memo. You know, it doesn't have to go that far right out of the bat, right off the right off the right out of the shoot. But um, you know, I think I think a lot of it comes in the um, in the uh, you know mindset every time you're in a meeting early on. You know, I I, I, I do advise you know use your time. You know, folks coming to Facebook, even when I joined Facebook in 2018, a lot of people said, you know what, don't do anything for six months. Just, just watch. And I, and I actually push back on that. I don't totally love that advice, but I do think there's a, there's a, um, there's some wisdom in it, you know, take some time, of course, to assimilate, cultivate yourself to the environment that you're in. But as you're sitting in every meeting, uh, bring, you know, the reason you're there is and, and the reason you're going to add value in the world is by injecting your experience into the current environment. And so be thinking in your head, what would I do? Or what is the rationale? And sometimes the way it starts to, it starts to become apparent when somebody has this is simple questions. You know, why do we do it that way? Um, has it always been that way? Like, I may be, I may, maybe not, but you know, would, you know, path B make sense over path A? That's the kind of um, you know talk, self-talk, and then and then discrete talks. You know, starting with peers, colleagues, boss. You know, which 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 indicates somebody who's thinking critically and thinking as an owner about about a situation. So you know, s start small, but but have that little engine, five horsepower engine, going in the back of your brain that thinks I'm an owner. You know, I'm an owner of this, and my job's not to just do what my boss tells me the other thing that was you know to me as an engagement manager at McKinsey you would see this in an associate like some associates you'd find a problem like okay this is what we need to do everybody's clear on the on the problem and the ultimate measurement of how this you know what a better outcome would look like whether it's a faster process or greater product growth or whatever the case may be you know and some you know for some associates it would be like okay here's what we need to do all right so you want me to do this analysis yeah you know do this analysis and uh, and come back in the next day and here's a spreadsheet. Well, okay. So we'll sit down, look at the spreadsheet. And that's, then you're like, okay, look at the spreadsheet. Well, this is what the spreadsheet tells me. Here's what I think we should do next. And you're almost in a daily drip, 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 drip of instructions, assignment, bring back, assignment, bring back. And then there's another type of associate or, you know, employee where, you know, you sort of give them the thing at the beginning of the week and, you know, they don't come back Tuesday or maybe Wednesday or Wednesday night, they come back and it's not just a spreadsheet, but listen, I've done the spreadsheet. Uh, here's what I think it's telling me and telling us about this business problem or this business opportunity. And, you know, maybe beyond that, here's then why, what I think probably we, the client or we need to do about it. Or it might be like, I think we were going down the wrong path. I think the hypothesis was wrong. We really should have been doing this analysis. So by the way, I took some time and I did that analysis instead. And here's what it says. You know, somebody who's thinking two, three, four moves on the chessboard ahead of just move your pawn from, you know, B1 to yeah. C2 or, you know, so that's the, that's the way it starts. And, you, and when you see that in somebody, you're like, winner, 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 chicken dinner. Like that's the kind of mindset that is, um, you know, you just, it's, you say, okay, this person's going to really have impact and that person and, and great work and people like that just attract more work and attract, more, you know, more responsibility and promotion and so forth. Yeah, no, it's, um, I, I like what you said, think like an owner and own the fund fundamental outcomes in the organization, be a critical thinker. Yeah. Those, uh, it's yeah. the perspective that's so, it's so valuable. I mean, we live in such a dynamic world, the rate of techno you know, technological innovation is so rapid these days, that um, if your company's not being disrupted or disrupting itself, um, it's going to be disrupted, right? So, you know, the, the organizations are dynamic, the environments that companies operate in are very dynamic. Um, it's just, and so if you're not thinking that way, the organization isn't gonna be able to navigate where it needs to go to, and uh, you need that critical thinking. So no, that's, that's really good stuff. And, you know, I, some of the perspectives I think that are different that we talk about here are, you know, in the military, you don't have products, you don't have customers, um, you don't have revenues, 
Um, you know, everybody is very, very young. I mean, these are just some very, very fundamental differences. And when you get into the private sector, it's, it's like, wait a minute, all those things count and they count like more than anything. So, you know, yeah. a lot of skills translate, but there's, a, there's also a lot of perspectives that you need to consider. Uh, I, I remember, think for me, uh, I was going to say, I think for me, yeah. going to business school was a real renaissance, if you will. And uh, my dad also was military. Um, I think when I told him to go to business school, you know, his mindset or his comment, you know, he's always very proud of me, of course, but he's like, really, you know, you're going to business school. Like, you know, what is that? Like, you know, you just want to make money. And, um, um, and to me, going to business school, does, you know, when you go to business school, you are going to find people whose goal is to become independently wealthy and, you know, businesses, you know, motivated, it's their, you know, it's capital, you know, and so capitalism. And so that drives our innovation, our economy. But, you know, to me, uh, Chris, the stuff you're saying, like, it's, it's really helpful to have a basic understanding of, of business tenants. And it was, it was like, wow, I was like super fascinated by this, science of marketing or the domains of strategy or you know the concept the financial structures of revenues and costs and incomes and balance sheets and like and like wow now i can read the business page and understand what is going on in the world it's a really good like decipher code to understand so many important things that are happening in the world so i do think that it's a great uh, skill set that doesn't have to just be about self-interest you know you can take all the skills and apply them in lots of different ways yeah, John. Hey, um, I, I, just a one or two more questions because uh, we really appreciate your time here today. Um, getting a little more, you know, granular. The three primary audiences of this virtual career expo for us here today, um, the, the three biggest are junior military officers, junior enlisted. Junior enlisted being the primary one, uh, and and then also the third one being military spouses. Um, what advice would you give to a uh, a junior enlisted person getting out after one or two terms, someone who's in their early to mid twenties may or may not have some college. Um, what advice and, and is interested, inspired by some of the things that they're hearing uh, from you and wants to get into the tech industry? What are some, some good quick landing points or pieces of advice that you would stress to them in terms of either certifications or education they might pursue using their GI bill or what have you? Yeah. Uh, so a couple things come to mind. First of all, everything I've said, totally on the table. Like, there's nothing I've said that is that is restricted by, you know, nobody ever checked with me. Half the people don't know what the Naval Academy is or the difference between officers or enlisted. I mean, that's just literally it's lost. They don't know. You know, so, yeah. so don't don't presume. And 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 secondly, I'd say some of the most impressive leaders we have, and I've worked with, or people I know folks i'm trying to remember there's just somebody a couple of weeks ago i was talking to who uh, you know that was their journey they went they went straight from high school and to enlisted they weren't sure what they wanted to do but you know i think oftentimes for me and i know for others you just appreciate that more because those are people who are self-starters finding their own way you know bootstrapping themselves um which is a great feature of of you and most folks in the military they start with you know there's no one you know, family endowment or, you know, you're pulling yourself up and you're self-starter and you're making what you got. And so that's, a, that's, so, so first of all, just be totally confident about your ability to have impact on the world and the start you have is, and the gift you've given yourself in military experience, it's this experience that goes with that um, in terms of your own drive and, and success is, is a huge asset, full stop, period. Um, Clearly, like, you know, the degree is, is worth getting. Uh, I do think that fundamentally, you know, we, we, I, I've hired senior folks in my organization who don't have a college degree. I hired a vice president recently who leads our commerce operations who does not have a college degree. Very unique human being, though, who's like done retail, you know, forever at every different level, you know, starting the shipping docks. So that's a possibility. But I think that's a, you know, it's a 100, 1,000 type of type of shot. So I, I definitely encourage that taking the time to get that uh, degree. Um, uh, as I've said, you know, if you want to be in tech, anything around computer science, IT, or business is, you know, I think an asset that, you know, will 
make you eligible. If you look at the Facebook job boards, though, you get a very real sense of what the types of jobs are and the types of um, degrees and experience we have. Um, I've always emphasized this, which is on your resume. Try to highlight, try to highlight how you, as a human being, have overcome or outperformed or done something extraordinary. Don't be shy about that. People want to see and love to see, you know, a fighter. They love to see a fighter, and a fighter could mean, you know, I started my first semester and I had a two seven or a two one, and you know, by my last where I figured it out and I was checking in with three sevens and three nines like that story in itself is a tremendous one if you graduated top of anything say it you know that kind of that, that kind of stuff uh, in terms of building your resume and your profile is um, is also really important and then I would say network you know uh, just like Chris and GI jobs offers and there's a lot of others uh, who can really help kind of forge relationships you know use those companies like ours want to hire people like you so that's you know use that to your advantage and just find those connections awesome john thanks a million man i'm going to let you go and uh i know i speak on behalf of our audience here today um really appreciate your uh your wisdom words of wisdom today and very inspiring words so thanks a million i'm going to jump into a little bit of uh housekeeping stuff but we'll we'll let you go you're welcome to stay around but i know you're very busy but um thanks again for being here john Thank you. Okay, uh, listen. Today, I want to thank our. Um, I want to thank the uh, beautiful campus of Garrett College uh, in Western Maryland. We are broadcasting uh, from there today. I especially want to thank my two hosts at Garrett College, the VA certifying official Ashley Wilt, as well as Stacy Holler, who serves as our director of marketing as the uh, director of marketing here at Garrett College. Also want to thank our uh, two sponsors today, our title sponsors, JDOG and Geico, and some of the other companies that are looking to hire you today include uh, Lidos, General Dynamics, Bath Ironworks, Verizon, Travelers, Vanilla Arabia, BGIS, US Express, 84 Lumber, Helmets to Hard Hats, Smith the Nephew, Oshkosh, and more. So get out there and uh, talk with them. They are here to hire you. We've got a few schools here today at the Virtual Career Expo as well, California, Institute of Arts and Technology, as well as the Learning Alliance Corporation. And of course, our good friend, Steve Miller is here. If you've never, um, if you've never considered franchising, but you've got a 680 credit score or better, and you've got $20,000 um, that you're able to invest, which also could come from home equity, uh, I encourage you to, and you've got a, a burning desire to, uh, to have your own business, I encourage you to talk with Steve Miller over at our franchise coaching booth who can guide you through that process. It's free and it's an opportunity to um, get free coaching on looking at the uh, franchising world. And then finally, I wanna thank our partners with American Corporate Partners who are uh, always standing by at the ready to uh, assist you with uh, any questions you may have. Uh, okay, some quick housekeeping. I wanna say, hey, we're, I'm really proud of our team. We're in our 20th year. Um, we work hard every day to connect the military community to civilian opportunity, which is our mission. We are good, our team is great. They work hard, but they're not perfect. So um, I want to encourage you to fill out the feedback forms. Let us know what we're doing well. Let us know what we wanna do better. And we are committed to getting better every, every time. So please fill out this feedback form. Secondly, um, if you had a good time and you'd like to do a video testimonial, we'd love to hear from you. Make, uh, uh, get an opportunity to talk with Edgar Reynolds. You can go to the GI Jobs booth and sign up to do a video testimonial with him. Uh, or you can email him if the line's too long. It's edgar.reynolds, R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S at gijobs.com. And then finally, um, any... Uh, any additional keynote, or I'm sorry, any additional virtual career expos, you can sign up for those uh, on our website as well. That's all we've got today. Thank you for joining us and best wishes in your pursuit of civilian opportunity. Thank you.